Hello everyone. Hi. Hi. We are currently in the car on our way to Gothenburg. I'm going to play the Swedish Championships this week. I'm feeling very excited. And I have this girl with me. Very good. Big shout out to your mom for this. I will show you. <laughs> the ultimate traveling snack. Right now we're actually 38 minutes away. It's a 5 hour and 20 minute drive. Almost there. Very nice. The Swedish championships are going to be played at Ale Disc Golf Park in Gothenburg. I have always wanted to play Ale and I've heard very good stuff about it. Yeah, feeling very excited about that. And uh, I think we're actually going to play two different layouts. There's going to be four rounds over four days. So first one layout, then another, and then the same as the first, and then the same as the second. But right now we're on our way to uh, not the hotel, um, the house where we are going to live, which is your family's friends. Yes. Yeah, so big shout out to them as well, the Bjorn family. Thank you for letting us stay at your place. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Now we're leaving for the first practice round at Ala. And it looks like this outside. Hopefully, and it looks like on the weather app, that it should be fine. The time is this. Yeah. So it's late. Yeah, we're gonna be finished by like 11 o'clock. But it's good. I need some practice. Bye bye. First hole, Ole, yellow hole. That's probably funny. How amazing is this place? We're in the middle of the jungle, there's nice rivers. Bridges everywhere. So far, love this place. This is so beautiful. No. But that's okay. It's a okay. Today is day two. I'm currently at the first hole at the white course. And uh, from my first looks, just looking over the area, it looks like a bomber course. So not my type of course. But yesterday I played the yellow one and it got really dark really quick. After 13 holes, I couldn't see my disc anymore. So I just walked through the course with a flashlight and looked at the holes. And I think the yellow course actually suits me pretty good. But this white one looks really long which is not my cup of tea and not what i'm good at so wish me luck here at hole two and i just have to say that this course is honestly the best looking course i've ever played just aesthetically pleasing wise because everything is so cool so unique and all these bridges everywhere this place is amazing and hole two actually looks like a hole that i could get a birdie on which is nice and i parked it 80 meter overstable forehand just through a standstill forehand with my venom. Easy tapping. Hopefully that's not the only hole that's short because then I think I'm screwed. But it brings my hopes up that I could get some birdies at least. Hole three, let's go. Hole three looks gettable as well. From the tee pad there, overstable forehand, get to here. And then a overstable backhand approach. Just over 200 meters to the basket. Should be gettable with a good first shot. But yeah, feeling good. All three is definitely gettable. I missed my C2 putt, but had a easy six meter for par. Currently minus one through three holes. Off to hole four. Boy. 310 meter par five. Through this gap, go right. Then I don't know. This one looks hard. 
maybe a cut roller. Hmm. When I was walking down the fairway, firstly, I saw this basket and I was like, that's not 310 meters. This could be pretty gettable. But then I remembered we're playing on the white baskets and then my dreams were crushed and I'm playing for par. Hole 5, 109 meter, par 3 downhill. What is this? Holy shit. I did actually have a pretty good look at the birdie. Just outside the circle, missed the putt. Right side chains, chained out. Holy shit, this looks amazing. But yeah, I chained out. Had to save par from down the hill because it rolled a bit. But yeah, got the par, still minus one. Oh, come on, dude. What is this place? They've built all this. This is amazing. I want my course to look like this. Wow. All right, I'm on my way down hole nine's fairway so front nine almost done i feel like it's a long course but i think i actually can get some birdies initially when i saw the first couple of holes i thought this was going to be a course where i just had to survive but i feel like all the other guys are gonna be like trying to score so why shouldn't i as well i know i don't have the same distance but i have angle controls if i just can get looks at birdies i should get some of them at least Feels better than I thought it would. And I actually feel like I could get a pretty decent score here. Play it safe where I can't get the birdies and attack really hard where I actually can. I almost lost my most expensive disc. This one. This one new is like four or 5,000 crowns, which is like four or $500 and I searched for it for 45 minutes on hole 15, but I just found it and it was in the water and I couldn't even see it. I felt it with a stick, so I'm really happy. I can't believe I almost lost this one. Beautiful. All right, I'm uh, back at the house and I've just finished my first round ever at Ole White and holy shit what a course it's friggin amazing like everything around the course not only the holes just everything around it's built up just beautifully amazing amazing place but when I got there I had the vision that it would be a course that I can't score on but now that I'm done I'm actually surprised I think I can play pretty well there I went minus four now on the practice run, bogey free, just staying out of trouble. If I can get that on the white course and then score properly on the yellow one, I think I can do pretty well. But yeah, amazing course, good work. Now time for dinner. Bye bye. Round one, done, in the books. I don't really know what to say. Plus three, I'm much worse than I was hoping for, but I'm not actually mad about how I played. I think I played pretty well. I think it might have been the most unlucky round I've ever played because all my bad shots were like ultimately punished and all my good shots, even if they were perfect, they were just this tiny branch that just kicked it out and it didn't end up where it was going to. On hole two, for example, I thought it was an ace run. I hit one branch and I landed 30 meters short. So even when my good shots got through, so even if I was six meters away from the basket, I was in the single 
most horrible spot you could be <laughs> from six meters away with like one bush perfectly in the way or two trees perfectly in the way i don't know it was just the unluckiest round i've ever played i hit almost all my putts i think i missed one putt inside the circle otherwise i i was dropping everything like even with those bushes and trees in the way i was just dropping everything but it felt like i was scrambling through the whole round and like i said before the first practice round I just came here from Åland, and in Åland they are one hour ahead, and I didn't account for that. So the sun went down one hour earlier than I thought it would. Yeah, I didn't play hole 14 to 18, so I hadn't played those before, and uh, it went horrible on those holes. So yeah, bad preparation there, but it felt like I was playing good. Wish me luck, white course tomorrow. It's more open, so in one way I'm not as worried about scrambling. Here at all, that's well. Very forehand with eight. Too high. Good line. Midnight prowl. Whoa! Hell hold bar. Broadcast? Five meters uphill. Yeah, right. Oh, so close. Look, I caught a scorpion. Hello, buddy. You are free to go. Where did you go? Where did you go? There you are. Hey. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy. And we're just about to head over to the course for round three. And I just had to say some quick words about round two. I felt good. I putted really good. I think I only missed one putt inside the circle. And that was when I was standing inside a fern tree. So I'm feeling pretty good. I made some like small mistakes that cost me a lot of strokes. The The score for round two was plus five and it's a much harder course. So it's not, it's not worse, but it's, I don't think it's that much better either. But I climbed some spots, but if I want to qualify for the last round, I have to put together a really good round today. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to be aggressive. <coughs> I'm going to get the birdies. Yeah. Like I said, putting feels great. So let's continue with that, but be more aggressive off the tee. I forgot to say as well, I was plus two through 15 holes, but I got three bogeys in a row on the last three holes. So just need to keep it together until the end. Yeah, I think my strategy is to just, just play this golf. I can't win the tournament, so 
I don't really care where, where I place, so let's just go out there and have fun. Play like I normally do when I play a casual run. Because I can't gain anything. So let's just be aggressive. All right, 25 minutes until tea time. And uh, we're warming up here on the short hold course. Just throwing some berries forehand and putting. And I got new shoes because you might have seen in some other clips that the sole on the last ones, they, yeah, they broke. So same shoe, but with Gore-Tex, so they're waterproof. Very nice. Hit the pole. Feeling good. Third round, done. I went plus five through the first six holes. Very nice. Started off with a missed putt from four meters on the first hole. Yeah, I just couldn't find my timing in the release. Every single shot from the tee on the first six holes were off. I just couldn't get the timing down. I early released or late released it on the first six holes. Had to scramble and most of the time from an impossible place. So yeah, really weird start. But then I found the timing in my release and I went through the last 12 holes. I got nine birdies. Uh, yep. In total, six bogeys and nine birdies and three pars. So yeah, minus three, really weird. And just as the sherry on top, I birdied the last hole that I didn't think I was even able to birdie, but I absolutely parked it. Minus three with nine birdies. I'm currently in the 90th place, I think, and I have to be top 72 to qualify for the last round. So I need some people to play really bad, but that's probably not gonna happen. I can't believe I just, mm, it took just a bit too long to find my timing. If I would have done it one hole earlier and birded hole six instead of got the bogey, then I would have qualified. So yeah, I got it going one hole too late story of my life but that means i have one more day to explore gothenburg and uh, play more courses wait and hope for the best and uh, i'll be back when i know the results i don't think i'm gonna make it to the final cut or the final round so i went out here to alling sauce to try out the uh, nolhaga disc golf park 30 minutes from the house it's gonna play a nice 18 hole course just for fun it I'm done at what's the course called Nolhaga this golf course I think here in Arling sauce went minus four bogey free and I don't understand why I get so many bogeys 
in the tournament because I don't normally get bogeys. Like this one, I played bogey free because as soon as I'm in trouble, I just pitch it up and get my par. I don't really understand where all the bogeys are coming from. But yeah, this was a pretty fun course. I think there's like a park further down. So it had that park feeling to it, but it was still a wooded course, not tightly wooded because it's pretty dense like this but the lines are crazy like this one i think yeah this is a very good example like here at hole 10 look at this line i would say that they really need to plan out the layout a bit it's way too far to walk between all the holes it could be much more compact but all in all i thought it was a fun course and uh, i would give it i would say four out of five just because it was so fun to play and nice baskets, four out of five. But I don't know how to get back to the car because I don't want to go all the way back to hole one because my car is behind down here somewhere. <laughs> but I don't know how to get down. I don't want to go all the way back. I just saw the final scores and I did not make the cut. Unfortunately, it was very unlikely. I think I was tied for 89th, basically straight in the middle. I think there was 184 players. If I can play the way I played the last 12 holes. Oh, look at there. Did you see it? <laughs> if I can play the way I played the last nine holes, no, the last 12 holes from the beginning, then I would have won that shit. But I just can't seem to get it to work. So annoying. Like, even if I played the way I played this course right now, I would still be, like, top 20, at least. But when I'm here, I'm more relaxed. I don't think as much. And I just go out and throw my shot. Go up, make the putt. Although I have to say I putted really well this competition, or this tournament. I have to give myself props for that. I putted really well. When I got up to my putt, I didn't overthink it. I was just... Doing my routine, slow and easy, get it to go in, went in every time. So I need to keep on doing that for the next competition. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I know I can win these competitions, or these tournaments. I just need to get it going early, keep on being aggressive. When I don't think, when I just play, when I have fun, then I'm so good at disc golf. And that's what happened the last 12 holes. I didn't think, I just played and I was having fun. Even though I had a really bad start, I just ignored it. And I said, now it doesn't matter what I do. So let's just be aggressive, have fun. And I did. And I played well. For future Kevin, that's what you need to do. Don't think, just play. Be aggressive, get the birdies, get it going early. Keep it going, don't slow down. Trust me, I'm gonna win one of these competitions, no doubt. Okay, so today is the final day of the Swedish Championships and I didn't qualify, so I have one day to just play lots of courses. And I was here last year at Slottskogan, but I couldn't play the real course, I only played the short hole course. So I'm finally here at the real course. I've been looking forward to this. I'm at hole two, there's lots of people, but I'm here to have fun. And then two more 18 hole courses. We already played one nine hole course today. It was pretty good. Three and a half stars, I would say. Is that correct? Three and a half, yes. Uh, but now Slottskogan. So let's have some fun. Uh, by the way, I'm playing yellow B, and I parked yellow A, so that's not good. Alright, we are done at Slottskogen, and I have to say I'm pretty disappointed. I thought it was gonna be like a good tournament type of course that would challenge like good players. I think the purpose of this course is probably for like amateurs or people that, that are trying out this golf for the first time because there were so many people, there were so many big groups of people playing and they had no idea how to play and uh, 
the holes were so short. None of the lines were like proper disc golf lines. You had to shape shots really weirdly and most of the time there were trees in the way for the perfect line. So I'm pretty disappointed. It was a really nice and well taken care of course, but I didn't really enjoy the lines or the holes that much. <coughs> Bless you. I would still give it like a 4 out of 5 star rating because it's a nice course for beginners but I would change up the shot variety or the lines I'm still okay with it being like a short course Now we're at a new 18 hole course. What's it called? I don't know. I don't know either. Um, this is what it's called, right there. Oh. <laughs> Post production, you know? <laughs> and uh, it's a really yeah. short beginner's course. I think the holes are like averaging 55, 60 meters. But it's a really nice environment. Having fun though. What hole is this? Eight. No, nine. So I'm minus seven through eight. Bye. Oh, take it there. Very good, very nice. Heard it. It's looking like they are a bit longer now. So that's nice. This one is almost 80 meters. I think that's parked as well. If that is parked, I think I parked the last six holes. That's good. Very good. I've really been liking this MD1 lately. Unlike my other MD1s, I can push it pretty hard and it goes straight, but then it actually has a little bit of a finish. So it's really nice. And there you can see why. Straight the whole way in a headwind and then at the end it was about to go a little bit left but then it hit the fence very nice day nice <laughs> I'm wondering if this hole is number two. Might be. Maybe. I, I don't, don't know. know. Maybe it's hole number 222. <gasps> but this course does not look very good. <laughs> no tee pads, just a pole in the ground that says you can film here. Just a hole in the ground that says what hole it is. With a big rock in front of it. Not so safe. Hey. hey. <laughs> this course is officially life threatening. What is this? On top of a rock like this. Throw down there. Awarafuk. And this course is actually for the students at the school nearby. Hey, hey. I'm not a student. No, you're not. But the students are over here at the school. And is this safe for them? I don't know. How old are the students? All right, so we're on our way home. And uh, we've currently been on the road for almost an hour. So we had to make a stop at this place. Imergården. I've never been here before and uh, I've heard lots of great things about it. So let's give it a try.
I don't know if we got it on camera, but I actually parked the first hole with a Hades roller somehow. So minus one through one. And I've seen this hole on coverage and it looks really cool. But now that I'm here in person, it looks a lot harder and a lot tighter than it looks on camera. Let's give it a try. I think that's good. Maybe a bit too low, so it might have been caught up in the grass, but I think it's a look. It actually got over the hill, so it's a perfect shot. Basket right there. Sit. Should be parked. Hole three, dead straight, going lunar. Get down. Sit. Six, seven meters. Can you see the basket down there? This is legendary. I've seen this hole on YouTube so many times, but now I'm finally here. 219 meter par four, straight downhill. And here on camera, it doesn't do it justice. This is so much more downhill than it looks. All right, I'm gonna go for a couple of shots, but starting off with a safe crave just down the middle, trying to keep it in the fairway. Then we can go for a forehand flex, and a high flip, trying to go as far as possible, but this is crazy. Oh my god, come back, please. No, last three. It almost came back. It's a bit of a headwind, so this one is really hard at the moment. Or, it's always really hard, but even harder now. That scramble shot was amazing. I'm really sad we didn't get it on camera, but I'm here for the birdie, even though I was straight in the woods on the first shot. I can't believe I did that. That's actually crazy. I was in the worst spot possible. I threw a flip up hyzer. I actually missed my gap, hit a really tiny gap, and it flipped up, skipped all the way here, and I hit that part. So that's a crazy birdie. Here on hole six, this is my type of nemesis hole because I'm really bad at throwing uphill, and it's 90 meters straight uphill. This was my second shot, and it's as far as I can throw. So this one really doesn't suit me. Still need to practice those. I misjudged the distance on my approach, so I came up short and took my first bogey. Boy, I'm scrambling. Nay. Pick a side. Look at this place. It's amazing. Hole 10, 145 meter par 4. Just hit the gap and you should have a approach for the birdie. I didn't hit the gap, but I'm the luckiest person alive, so that's fine. Should be fine. That's perfect. Pick the basket. Very good. <laughs> Here in hole 12, I think it's all about placement on the first one. I think I open up the shot if I land a bit to the left. Go with a bit of a flex line, but let it finish left. I think that's perfect, but I don't know. Look at this fairway. There's 
this everywhere. I freaking love this. 64 meters left. Baby flex, MD1. There is the basket. That's bad. Not too far out. Never mind, it's perfect. <laughs> Good par save. Parked it. Never mind, it wasn't far. Skipped a bit left, I don't know what up there, but should be a path. I'm playing really good today. I'm minus six at the moment, one hole to go. This hole is really hard. Finished it off with a double bogey, but still minus four. Holy shit, Imer Gordon has to be in my top five of courses I've played. Everything was so nice, well planned out, and the lines were really nice. The fairways were amazing, tee pads awesome, just everything so freaking nice. But yeah, now we're going on the road again. And we might stop at A6 in Jan uh, but we'll see if we have the stamina to do that and if it's nice weather. But if we do, we'll see you there.